So thank you so much for joining. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Abdul Malik Mujahid. I'm president of San Vision. Last uh, uh, week, I mean, uh, about two weeks ago or three weeks ago, San Vision issues a talking points and thinking points about coronavirus, uh, what need to be done by the communities. Uh, and that was three weeks ago when no one was talking about it. But we spent the weekend uh, writing eight articles uh, for masjids, uh, for families, uh, for the communities, for imams. And uh, yesterday morning, we issued that for, uh, to, throughout the world. And many people are using. One of the thing which we launched that was webinars. So we'll have webinars uh, uh, every day. Uh, for the next uh, uh, six or seven days, uh, we have locked in. And uh, uh, so this particular one is focused on what masjid can do. What we recommend that masjid do not have congregational prayers. It is against the law in some cities, but some people are still doing it. Uh, but we have a whole Islamic reasoning on our website. If you go to sanvision.com, uh, it will uh, uh, guide you uh, through why we should not have the congregations, congregational prayers, and it provides Islamic argument. But when we say that there should not be Islamic, uh, should not be Juma Salat and also uh, congregational prayers and a weekend school, uh, because that uh, is the most important thing to do. We do not want Masjid to shut down completely. Actually, this is the time when more help from the Masjid will be needed. And this is all the presentation about, and Brother Ta has written an article on which uh, uh, this webinar is based. So article is found on sanvision.com homepage. But at this moment, I would like to introduce Brother Taha Gayur, who is uh, Vice President of Sound Vision, based in Toronto area, a khatib, and until very recently, uh, although he has been with Sound Vision for uh, probably 18 years or 19 years, he took a hiatus and he went and became the executive director of ISNA. But since I'm an old man, I was wise enough. I told him, anytime you leave ISNA, you should contact us first. So he did, and I'm very happy he's back as our vice president. So brother Taha Gayur, please take it over from here. <clears throat> I'll be back with you for the, at the ending part of the presentation. Great, thank you very much. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you, uh, Imam Abdul Malik Mujahid. Uh, it's actually for the past uh, 10 years at least that I can remember of doing webinars, I'm the one who introduces Imam Mujahid, so I'm actually a uh, little embarrassed and humbled, and I actually didn't ask him to introduce me. I actually asked him to introduce the webinar, but thank you very much for that generous introduction. <clears throat> and as you know, Imam Mujahid himself um, is, a, uh, is, is not only a founder and visionary of uh, Sound Vision and Justice for All, and a lot of visionary projects across America, North America, US, and Canada. Um, he is, has been around in the interfaith work, interfaith community uh, for a good 30 years now um, and has been recognized among the uh, you know, top uh, 500 most influential Muslims for several years in a row, uh, alhamdulillah. Um, and today I'm very honored that I'm actually co-sharing this webinar with him. Um, and actually this article is partly inspired by some of the teachings and the articles that he himself has written. Um, and then I will be, and we will be referring to those, inshallah, as we proceed. So just wanted to start off by uh, acknowledging, as Imam Mujahid also mentioned, um, it is a, a very, it's a time of a lot of anxiety for not only for our community, but today we are talking specifically to our masjid leaders, imams, uh, community leaders, volunteers, uh, and there's some wonderful people who are online with us today from across the U.S. and Canada uh, who have signed up. Um, and I know it's a very difficult time for you guys, for all of us, uh, because every day, in fact, sometimes every hour of the day for the past five days, at least, uh, there have been battlegrounds in the, in the boardrooms, uh, in your meetings, trying to figure out what should be the next step. Uh, and you're trying to balance uh, what is beneficial for your jama'ah, for your community, for your congregation versus uh, the safety issue. 
and, and you're making some critical, difficult decisions at times and may Allah bless you, keep you a lot of, give you a lot of strength. And this is why uh, we thought it's important that while we're making those critical decisions about, uh, you know, hopefully shutting down our uh, masjids for prayers and Juma, which is unfortunate and it's been a very difficult process for a lot of us. I read a post from an imam last night that he said, you know, we decided to shut down our masjid and last night after Isha, you know, uh, he was saying basically he was in tears and people were in tears. I myself witnessed one of the prayers, which was one of the last prayers in that mus another masjid and people were in tears and they were making dua and, you know, they're concerned about it. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the strength to, shall I come back to our masjid with a renewed strength and faith and iman when we come back to, to prayers in a few days and few weeks time. In the meantime, there's a lot of work that needs to be done in the community. Um, and this is what we're here to talk about. So how can uh, Masjid's crisis response team provide social services and relief to um, during the COVID-19 outbreak? Um, and that is the key here, crisis response team. If you don't have one, this is the time to actually develop it. This is the time for us to actually um, showcase the best form of khidma and tradition of khidma that we can revive in our own communities in the masjid through the masjid platform. And of course, physical space is limited now. This is the time for us to exemplify it, not for only our community, but the wider community, because there is a lot of need for that, uh, for, for, for that work. And here, and today we are here to actually really share those uh, eight points, uh, sorry, 10 points, uh, inshallah, over the next few minutes. So the first, uh, point is, and first thing you can try establishing is really get your masjid's zakat or sadaqa collection uh, working for the needy uh, new immigrants, refugees, single parents in your neighborhood. Um, refugees, new immigrants, single parents are finding it very, very difficult. They, they, are, they are really the ones who are the, uh, bear the, the, the biggest uh, or heaviest brunt of uh, of the lockdowns they're already having a hard time putting food at the tables they're already finding it difficult working multiple jobs at times or living on social assistance to meet meet their ends meet um, and and as we know in many north american cities over the past few months uh, rents in particular ha and utilities have skyrocketed even groceries have 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 become extremely expensive so it's becoming very very difficult for them and if you already haven't uh, established a zakat committee, you better do it now. Um, and, um, and, and that's one aspect of it. If you're able to do it yourself, um, then you need to have two committees at least. One is going to be the assessment um, full, uh, you know, committee that is going to basically assess the applications. So developing a system of screening, developing a system of uh, you know, qualifying the, uh, the beneficiaries in your community um, and your neighborhood is going to be one aspect, zakat or sadaqa, of course. And second aspect is going to be, of course, the distribution and disbursement of funds. Um, and uh, if you do not have the capability in your masjid or in your area or in your community, then you can partner with other zakat organizations that are out there uh, in different cities. Um, so j let me just, uh, you know, before I, I get, get into that, uh, if you look at the screen, for instance, there is a simple zakat application form. Ideally, it should be longer. It should be, have more information. But this is a, a, you know, organization from New Orleans that has zakat form. Ideally, it should be a bit longer to actually get more information. But the idea is that masjids do have, many masajid already have their own zakat committees that you can rely on. Otherwise, you can turn to uh, zakat uh, organizations that specialize in it. In Canada, we have Canada Zakat. In Chicago, you have Zakat Chicago. I know there are other cities that have more centralized zakat systems as well and organizations as well. So you can actually utilize those, give your zakat to these organizations, empower them, and they can distribute it on your behalf. But this is important that the community knows that you have a zakat uh, and sadaqa disbursement plan of some sort, and this is the time to announce it more than ever. Another um, idea is to launch a grocery delivery drive for the seniors um, and, uh, and the people who are living uh, in your community with disabilities. 
Um, there are already some churches, mosques, as well as some grassroots youth groups, organizations that have already launched some uh, drives and, and, and uh, these kinds of amazing services. Um, and, 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 you know, this will go a long way. Uh, here's an example called Good Neighbor Project. And this is actually something that was launched in GTA, in the GTA, in the greater Toronto area, as well as in, Houston, in uh, Dallas recently. I'm sure there are many other wonderful examples of people doing this. Uh, one thing I would request you not do is in this photo, for instance, these young uh, volunteers who are going around uh, delivering groceries is of course not to come too close to the people you're delivering these groceries to. You need to maintain your social distancing um, as has been highly, highly recommended. So we wanna make sure that we launch in every city um, this kind of project. So yes, you can do this individually in your own neighborhoods, that's amazing uh, on your own, but it will have a far bigger impact if your message comes out and comes out and says that we are developing a team of volunteers to drop off uh, delivery and do deliveries to local uh, seniors and people with disabilities or, or single parents who cannot come out uh, on a regular basis and, and develop a schedule. It requires somebody to be a little more organized to actually make that happen. Third is uh, connect with the lonely in your neighborhood with a virtual uh, buddy system. Uh, it's going to hit people very hard once the masajid are closed, malls are closed, um, cinemas are closed, libraries are closed, um, as has already happened in many, many, many cities across Europe and of course in Canada and the US as well. Um, this is extremely important that people know wh who to turn to, where to go for, uh, you know, simple questions for some sort of, um, you, know, uh, you know, just human connection that people need because social isolation is gonna really, really hit many, many, uh, you know, uh, sorry, many single people and lonely people very hard. So one of the things that, um, that I've seen work really well is developing some sort of WhatsApp system, What's a WhatsApp group that keeps your people in the masjid or around the masjid connected. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be only Muslims. It could be uh, ideally Muslims and non-Muslims. Anybody who is lonely, who's looking for just a connection, develop a buddy system. Develop a system where you have less a team of core 10 volunteers who are going to be responsible for on one-on-one -on -one connection um, with let's say 10 people at a time. And they're checking in and you're checking up on these people uh, every let's say third day, once a week at the least. And this way, you are making sure that they realize and they know that they belong. They have somebody to turn to in person, uh, of course, virtually, as well as, of course, WhatsApp groups, as well as any other forms of communication that you utilize to make sure that they are in the loop and we do not leave uh, young people behind uh, and local, sorry, and lonely people behind uh, and, 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 and have them uh, you know, and lead to things that are maybe worse than what, what we may be facing at this point. Number four is thank the frontline workers in your city on social media, over email, or by sending them thank you cards. Um, this is very much doable, very easily doable, um, and it is a need of our time. Uh, while all of us, uh, or most of us, are sitting in the comfort of our own homes, safe and secure, you know, in hygienic uh, situations and, and environment, maintaining social distance uh, as much as possible. There are thousands and thousands of frontline workers in your own community who are uh, nurses, they're physicians, they're police, they're firefighters, they're paramedics, um, they are collector, garbage collectors, the grocery store workers, restaurant servers, if these restaurants are still open, and on and on and on. They are risking their lives for us. We need to uh, step up as a community and make sure as an organization, we come out and start making, uh, thanking them publicly for the hard work they're doing. And I'll just give a quick, couple of quick examples. Here's a lawyer uh, in Toronto who posted this, and this is powerful what he did. He said, this is my friend, Dr. Ahmed Mia, frontline emergency room doctor, I'm at home working on my iPad. He and other doctors and nurses around the world 
are on their on the front lines. They are my heroes. Thank you. And see how many people tweeted this. How many people liked it? 5.1 k people liked it. Over 500 people actually retweeted this. <clears throat> this is powerful. This is what needs to come out from your own masjids, from your own uh, masjid social media platforms: Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, there's another example of a, of a group of people who uh, reach out to their uh, the fire department and uh, wrote this to the Michigan, uh, oh, sorry, Mitchum, I guess, firefighters. So here's a beautiful example of what you can do as an organization, as well as, of course, individually. Uh, and that needs to happen on your, through your organization's letterheads, social media platforms, and even through phone calls as much as possible. And the last part uh, that I'm gonna cover today before I hand it over to Imam Mujahid is offering tax clinic service to your neighborhood. This is a peak tax season. So why not uh, take this opportunity to establish free tax clinics? Um, and this is quite a norm, both in the US and in Canada, especially among churches. Now some masajid have been doing it as well for some time. I know in, um, in, in, in Isna, Canada, um, there have been sort of clinic, clinics going on in the past. Um, uh, now, there are other masajid and, of course, many churches who are doing this. Again, helping those who are disenfranchised, low-income families who would benefit from this the most. And that's what we're looking for, that impact on those who are really the most vulnerable in our society, in our community. And those are refugees, new refugees. Those are newcomers. Those are low-income families single parents who can really, really benefit from your services. And once again, if now that physical work is, you know, physical connection is lost for some time, why not make it online? Why not make it over the email and figure out some ways, safe ways of communicating and exchanging documents as you need to and just help them file their taxes online. So these are a few things that I wanted to share and I'll hand it over to now to Imam Mujahid to take over. <clears throat> Asalaamu As Alaikum. Uh, once again, uh, thank you so much, Brother Taha, and those who have just joined. Uh, Brother Taha Ghayur has been working with Sun Vision for 18 years with a couple of uh, years hiatus. He's the Vice President of Sun Vision. Thank you so much uh, for preparing the PowerPoint and presenting the early part of it. Uh, one of the things is that, you know, in larger cities, there are multiple masjids. That format need to be a little different and better organized. There should be, for example, in Chicago or in New York, all the masjids should have one phone line which they publicize. That phone line must be, uh, uh, men and women should be listening to that 24 seven. And there could be 20 volunteers and uh, there are systems available uh, which will uh, hunt so if one is picking up fine, otherwise it will go to the second person or the third person. And one phone line publicized by all people. What will happen if, if there is a need for food? Uh, for example, uh, a family uh, has not purchased enough food and they do not have food available. So they will call that phone number that we need some food. So a volunteer can go based on their food so they can call a masjid where they are, or a volunteer. For example, the masjid is in area code 60603. As soon as phone call comes, I need some food here, or I need someone to take me to the hospital, or something like that. That one phone people should have information, okay, which volunteer or which uh, uh, masjid is close, and they inform them. So they closely handle that. In larger city, wherever there are two, three masjid or more, there should be a one phone number, which everyone uh, is attending and informing. Then, then I would say, Taha, just you mentioned about the uh, uh, WhatsApp. Uh, WhatsApp is hot, but a lot of uh, elderly, and why it is important to mention elderly, because uh, in some statistics, science is still developing, data is still developing. According to some statistics, 
uh, uh, 26% of our death are of elderly people who are uh, uh, in 80s or even people 60s and the 70s are more vulnerable. So what body is, when, when virus attack those people, their body strongly reacts. So as a result of a strong reaction, body is unable to handle itself because they might have diabetes or heart situation or high blood pressure or anything like that. And younger people, their bodies are handling it in a more balanced way. It doesn't mean uh, much because Spain coach of their popular team, he was just 22 year old, he died of this same uh, thing. So, so, so it is important to have a support system developed and available in the community. And if there is a support system which already exists, uh, say some church has developed or a government institution has developed a system, this is not the time for we to reinvent the wheel. This is a problem which is already happening. Uh, for example, uh, World, uh, World Organization offered World Human Rights, sorry, the World Health Organization which has been successful in eliminating uh, uh, smallpox from the world, which has been successful, almost successful in eliminating polio. They offered 60 countries um, their test kits. Unfortunately, America refused, and here's it makes a difference. In uh, South Korea, there are more people tested as a result, there is a low level of death. In Italy, low number of people are tested. As a result, there are 10 times the death. So cooperation for all human beings and all nations is critical. So if there is already one number, maybe you can volunteer to be part of it. It doesn't matter who is running it at this moment. Second thing, if there is, a, uh, there is a system in which everybody is plugged in, let our masjid plug into the same system. So we are offering help to whether it's a Catholic or a Protestant or a Muslim or doesn't believe in anything. So, so, so this is, uh, you know, in Sharia, saving human life is the top priority. That must dictate that whatever system already exists, just plug into that instead of recreating the whole thing. So food delivery was one thing which we talked about. If we have a network, uh, we plug into that. Uh, food banks are normally, uh, masjid could become part of that. And as Brother Taha was saying, don't uh, hand delivered and hug and kiss and all that. Hugs, hugs and kisses and shaking hand is all gone. Just maintain a six feet distance. You leave on the door, and then let them know through the phone that it is on their door. Uh, next, please. So one of the major issue is that right now, since uh, tests were not available in Italy, uh, so we didn't know who needed help and to what level. So there are a lot of funerals. Now, since people are not allowed to congregate, uh, in uh, now US government is saying not no more than 10 people should congregate. So this is an issue. And they're also recommending that people should be six feet away from each other. So in my train, and I came to office this morning, people who are living six feet distance and sitting. It is possible because not many people are traveling. In California, they have trains. Uh, they're adding more, uh, uh, more uh, uh, what you call them, more uh, train uh, uh, compartments to it. So people can still sit six feet apart uh, of those people who must travel. So, so all precautions are being taken. Because of that, funerals are going to be a major issue. We already have report of a Muslim passing away because of the coronavirus. There may be more issues like that. So information need to come to the masjid and uh, most likely since his body is contaminated, you cannot handle the body. Only professionals who have proper equipment, meaning they have their covering uh, their body uh, and they have a mask and all those things available, they can handle a body. So at this moment, uh, this is not becoming a mass casualty situation, but uh, all masjid need to plan 
and figure out who has the proper equipment to handle the body and uh, take it to graveyard and bury them. Uh, we have received five, six questions in this regard to our office early this morning, and we will be developing a guideline. So if you have not subscribed to Sound Vision, this is the time to subscribe to it. And we will have an article ready available on it by tomorrow. We already have eight outlines and guidelines which are available on our website on soundvision.com uh, on different aspects, including this article on which Brother Taha is providing uh, this presentation. Next, please. So this is the hotline which we already talked about, that if there is a hotline, plug into that. If you feel necessary, instead of each masjid having a separate hotline, have all the masjid combined have one hotline and make sure that everybody is picking up that hotline. If hotline is too busy, have the phone service, provide multiple phone lines to it. Uh, this is on a Starbucks. By the way, you cannot sit in a Starbucks any longer. In Chicago area, you can buy from a Starbucks, but you must exit. They have taken away all the chairs, so people don't congregate. Uh, it may be different in different places. So this is very critical that uh, phone line you establish has capacity to handle multiple calls and multiple volunteers. It will, uh, they, they call it, I think, hitting system. Uh, so, so negotiate and develop that. But if already a system exits, just plug in there. Next. Inform your local consular office and other government official about your services, not only them, but also inform media. Media is uh, becoming a major uh, a tool of serving what is available to you. So government need to know what services you have and the media need to know and they need to list what services you're offering. Once again, plug into system instead of reinventing. This is the mistake America is making. They're trying to reinvent the wheel instead of getting the test kids from World Health Organization, which has a proven track record of dealing with pandemics. Uh, this is unfortunate, uh, but America, unfortunately, is waiting for test kit. Uh, we have a colleague, he's an imam and he's a PhD. His daughter needs to be tested. And uh, he went to hospital. Uh, they cannot test him. He called 911 and they are unable to guide, uh, put him on hold, looking at paperwork, uh, test kits are not available. This is a major complaint. So if test kits are available, there is a system. If you go on uh, Soundvision website, there is a online system. People are freely evaluating whether you need to go to test site or not. Once they determine that you need testing uh, for coronavirus, they will tell you where to go because not every hospital have uh, those services available. So don't go to hospital. Otherwise, you may end up contaminating other people. Uh, so they will guide you how you're going to. This is available on our website right now. Next, please. Which building was that? Okay, so, so you already are saying that. Uh, this is very important point Brother Taha has put together. When a disaster happened, Katrina, the hurricane, uh, our government federal system was not available for several days. So what happened in New Orleans, which is a city where major disaster happened when Katrina, uh, it was I think 12, 13 years ago, uh, a masjid was on a higher ground. That masjid became a center of people bringing in supplies and guiding all churches and everybody was collaborating and masjid was the center of it. And then those people moved to uh, Houston and in one stadium, there were 28,000 people. We in Chicago and other places collected money to provide to Muslim community in Houston. So Muslim were taking a day for feeding and other people were day. Now this situation is very different. You don't congregate. You don't go to a stadium. You actually isolate. So, so this is a different type of disaster. But you need to know who else is offering what. Maybe what you have, uh, the next door church doesn't have. 
maybe what you have is already being done somewhere maybe there is a phone number already so so maybe you should initiate a call between the church and the synagogue leaders unless there is already one done so if it is already done great if not one you initiate that so leadership talk with each other and say okay what services we have available so they can offer those services and then all of them mutually publicize so interfaith community what the first responder when the disaster happened uh, in new orleans and all those places because they know the community well they know the people well uh, faith communities are first responders although in this situation they cannot congregate but volunteers should be available to help so interfaith connection how we offer our services is critical so thank you so much brother taha for putting interfaith thing is there you want to take it Unity. Uh, no, Mama Jahid, uh, go ahead, please. You can uh, finish us off. Uh, with this. Okay, so uh, develop a crisis management and communication for your masjid. So WhatsApp has a limitation of 250 people. You have more people. So one WhatsApp group should be of organizers and volunteers. Then each one of them can have 250 or 100 or 50 other people. So you divide up. So you are thoughtful in making a hierarchy of WhatsApp group. So at the city of Chicago, for example, top leaders, um, 100 or them, or they should be in WhatsApp. And then there should be a volunteers WhatsApp. There are more volunteers, so multiple of them. And then they go to individual people. Same thing for your family. So your family should have one WhatsApp group, and but the families are connected with other families, right? So, so information dissemination system, but I also recommended, recommend phone tree. Just Google it, how to make a phone tree, and I put a message uh, already there. Uh, because elderly people are not on WhatsApp, and they are not big on email. Uh, once I sent an email, an elderly person said, oh, but you didn't call me to say that you sent me the email. So you see, there are different cultures of connection. So phone tree is important for people who are most vulnerable. And these are elderly people. So develop the crisis management system. And of course, enhance your communication, meaning in the beginning, uh, you know, there's too much information. At this moment, there's information overload. Everybody has tons of things and uh, newspapers and um, uh, Washington Post, New York Times, Toronto Star, everybody has information overload. People don't have time to distill all that information. For example, most of you people at this moment did not know that before you go to hospital, you're not supposed to go to hospital, you're supposed to call. But before you could call, most of you probably did not know that there is an online thing which Sanvijan yesterday announced that they will, uh, that is a telemedicine people, they're professionals. They will guide you through whether you need to go to hospital or you need to do something else. And if you need to go to the hospital, hospital do not have kits available. So which place you need to go where you will have kit available. So in this way, Enhancement of communication also means distilling information, making it on a one page. What is it which needs to be done? And uh, Brother Ta, if you don't mind, I'm not taking notes. If you write it down, we'll develop that one page. Uh, what needs to be done? And, and so that page needs to be circulated uh, for people. And maybe we need to have our toll free line also available and uh, attach volunteers to that. Because if not every city, every masjid have a system, we have a system and then we can divert that information to those people. Uh, so we can have one national uh, phone system going and uh, uh, <clears throat> the technology, up your technology game. I don't know, what, what do you mean by that? Uh, you want to say? Yeah, I just wanted to, uh, the whole point here is that, uh, of course, uh, is to make sure that you are, um, it's related to point number two, but uh, the idea that, you know, you are, you are becoming more virtual. That is the key, right? Uh, Alhamdulillah, Sun Vision has been virtual for the past good 20 years, and we have been there, been there as pioneers online. But, uh, and we, again, the idea is not to reinvent the wheel, but the systems and tools that are already there, like Zoom, for instance, or go to webinar or whatever else out there, WhatsApp. Idea is that we 
you know, trans transition from some of the traditional ways of communicating and, and, uh, and connecting with people and really make sure that we have a good online presence wherever we are, because that's the only way we're going to communicate going forward. Not only that, but also, as I mentioned earlier, in a future webinar uh, day after tomorrow, I think we are talking about a home because mm -hmm. uh, westernized families are not used to being with each other. Suddenly mom and dad and children, everybody is at home. People will be on each other's neck. In China, there are uh, violence in family has gone up when people were uh, close like that. Same thing happened in Christmas. And there are some reports, unfortunately, in Ramadan also happened. But that's not the time when a whole family is together. You're together. So in technology game, it is also important. How do we uh, benefit from what is going on? Uh, so uh, classes are happening. So teaching classes, how classes will happen. Uh, and I will, we'll talk more when we'll be talking about the family that there are already online classes where Muslim are learning how to teach uh, Islamic schools and the weekend school, how to do these things. Those things are already available in the mainstream, uh, which are science and math and those things you could do already. So develop your own curriculum uh, to benefit from that time with families together and have a structure to it. A uh, fourth point, collaborate, cooperate, and connect. We already covered it multiple times during this presentation. Saving life is like saving a whole humanity. That's what God Almighty has said. And based on that, the first principle of Sharia is to safeguarding human life. This is the first principle of Sharia. Everything comes below that. And that's why scholars have decided that Juma Khutbah should not take place. People should not gather and all that. But collaborate and cooperate but not in a hugging and a kissing way. Postpone that. Put that in dua. Allah, Rasulullah has said that when you make dua for someone in their absence, it increases love. So do that. But connect, cooperate, and uh, instead of recreating the system, plug into the system, being part of it and volunteer through that. And if system doesn't exist, then you collaborate with others to create. So, so we are asking at city level system to be developed. Whatever service you offer, ensure uh, about uh, uh, your safety and safety of your team and beneficiary. So personal hygiene, social distancing is extremely important. We have articles on our website about the personal hygiene whole lot of Islamic practices are making much more sense uh, when this crisis is coming. I used to make wadu and you used to make wadu, but I'm doing more thorough wadu now than before. And anytime I break wadu, I make wadu. So it, it is important to pay attention to. Next, please. Okay, so this is, uh, you take it uh, for the conclusion here, Brother Taha. Sure. So thank you once again uh, for, for your patience. Uh, whatever we talked about, of course, is not rocket science. Um, of course, some of this is already been done by some organizations and masajid out there. Some of these are best practices we know out there by churches and synagogues. Um, and the whole point is we are trying to really enhance our, 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 uh, our own social services for the wider community uh, to provide more opportunities for service and khidmah to the community uh, as much as possible. And of course, sadaqa, the whole tradition of sadaqa to the wider community. Uh, so as we conclude uh, today's webinar, a uh, few action items. One is um, please continue donating to Sound Vision. Sound Vision, uh, you know, team, while, you know, it's interesting, most people saying I'm working from home or I'm, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I have a nice time, easy, relaxing time for the next few weeks. Of course, unfortunately, a lot of people are losing their jobs, which is very sad, uh, especially in the service industries. Uh, but Sound Vision team has been working 24 hours, especially over the past uh, one week. And I would say last four nights and four days have been very, very intense because we're trying to provide alternatives. We're trying to provide these services. And all of this requires your generous contribution, which we know many of you have already always been giving. So please, please help us uh, continue this. Um, and this leads to uh, the second point, which is uh, every day starting today at 12 p.m. Central Time, 
1 p.m. Eastern time and other time zones, equivalent time, zo uh, time zone other in, uh, across other time zones, we're going to be offering these um, weekly or daily webinars. And if you go to soundvision.com slash webinars, and I'll actually show you the list in just a moment, you can see the list of webinars that we are offering. Um, so tomorrow, we have a, an amazing webinar coming up with Daoud Moresby, who is a well-known um, Nasheed artist, songwriter, uh, art, um, artist, writer, um, and, uh, and, and a homeschooler. So he's going to provide tips on how do we uh, make the best of uh, our uh, time with families and children in particular. What can you do? Ten things you can do with kids at home over the next few weeks. Um, the day after that, Imam Abdul Malik Mujahid, same time, is going to be offering uh, a webinar on powers of uh, power of wudu and personal hygiene from Islamic tradition. The, the day after that, which is Friday, uh, Imam Mujahid is going to be talking about making the best use of and the most out of uh, our Juma um, and, and Fridays. What else can you do if the Juma prayer is not, no longer available in congregation? Um, the alternative programming. Um, and on Saturday, we have uh, Dr. Farah Hussein, who is a uh, uh, who is a social uh, who, who is a PhD, uh, who is going to be providing uh, talking about dealing with uh, anxiety and social isolation in over the next few weeks and so on. So please check it out, and I'll show that to you perhaps uh, after while you're doing Q and A. Uh, the last one is the petition, which I like Imam Mujahid to talk a little bit about uh, what this petition is about, and is it is critical for all American Muslims and our organizations and masajid to disseminate and to promote. Uh, yes, thank you so much. Uh, Asalaamu As Alaikum again. Uh, I see some hands are up and as soon as... Uh, so so uh, the test kits is the major issue. Uh, unfortunately, uh, test kits are not available and that caused Italy to have 10 times more uh, death than South Korea. So this is a major issue. And why it is not happening, we don't know, but we are asked, we're looking for 100,000 people to sign a petition on justiceforall.org forward slash test, uh, which is uh, demanding our government uh, to take test kits from World uh, Health Organization. So uh, immediate uh, uh, could be done because what they are saying, they are still projecting uh, most of the Americans will not have access to kits uh, for a month or so. And that will be extremely devastating. So for that reason, uh, we are asking all of you to please uh, circulate justiceforall.org forward slash test. Uh, it's a sister organization powered by Sound Vision through which we do our human rights work. And what is more human rights work right now than getting these kids to the people in America? Uh, the estimate in America projected by the government is that close to a million or two people gonna die eventually with this if, uh, uh, if uh, uh, these things are not immediately available. So uh, I see the hand of Sheikh Qadri. Uh, please go ahead and uh, if you have any question or comments. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Malik and uh, Brother Taha. Great uh, uh, information uh, and webinar here. Uh, just uh, a quick uh, note, uh, Brother Malik, uh, the uh, hotline. I'm not aware of uh, any other in Chicago uh, that has the same hotline as Sound Vision does. If you let us know, we will publish it uh, on the CIOGC website, the Council of Islamic Organizations. and. Uh, we have uh, formed a task force also, CIOGC Joint Task Force. Um, uh, several of our members are in it, including Sound Vision. And uh, if you let us know the hotline number, we will do that. And that call uh, for the members and non-members is tomorrow at 8 p.m. here. We have sent out the Zoom link as well. So uh, the 10 points that you have mentioned, Alhamdulillah, those are great. Some of them uh, have been like the Zakat and Sadaqat and Grocery Drive. Uh, things like that have been started by some of our uh, masajid, some of our members, the ICNs, the MCCs and uh, others, Alhamdulillah, ICWs. So there are several that have already started. And what we are doing is, inshallah, as a uh, collaborator or the federation, uh, connecting all of them together we have uh, assessed some of the needs that are that exist in the south and the west side, 
and there are others uh, that we are still in the assessment uh, mode, inshallah. So just uh, let anybody and everybody know that tomorrow at 8 p.m. Uh, Council Islamic Nations Task Force for this coronavirus, inshallah. Thank you. Great, thank you, uh, Brother Sheikh Hadri, for sharing that. This is this is amazing, and that's the kind of coordination we need at all city levels. Uh, if Imam Mujahid wants to comment or say anything, feel free to do so. Okay, that, that's all good. No, we do not have a uh, hotline. Uh, we have toll-free numbers available, and I was just loud thinking whether we should. I think Council of Islamic Organization of Greater Chicago is the coordinating body of Chicago. I think uh, you should be the one to launch a hotline, uh, which so then uh, volunteers are attending to that and uh, uh, asking uh, what need is and what zip code they are in and their phone number and email, and then uh, forwarding it to mosque uh, and volunteers who live close to them. So you should solicit volunteers and uh, uh, with their zip codes and all that information, as well as uh, most of the information you already have. So no, we will, we will assist you in publicizing that hotline. Uh, I was just wondering loud if, if there is already one non-existence we might start, but I think CIGC and whatever city you guys are from, if your city has a coordinating body, this is the time for that body to deliver. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so can we have uh, Galaxy S1 something, please talk? Your name is not there, so. Hello? Yes, go ahead, please. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. For this uh, webinar. So for, uh, for our uh, elderly and uh, for the lowly people that they are, uh, they can't uh, go out or they are afraid of uh, the spread of this, uh, this virus, as, as a community, we would like to offer our help, but most of the places here, like such as like Costco, Walmart, Shopper, Drug Mart, there is no mask, there is no, no other like uh, precautionary tools that we can use. So for instance, there's a lot of people that I was thinking, if we want to deliver some grocery or something that they can order, and they just have to call a certain store and they order it, and we can deliver it for them if they can't go out. So is there anything that you guys from experience collaborate that uh, we can offer that help for people that uh, they can go out of house and uh, they're afraid to go out? I think this is something which need to be organized by community by community. Uh, we are more focused on information exchange and guide, but this is, uh, so this is something which was covered by Brother Taha in presentation. This is something which needs to be organized. And some of those uh, things are difficult. For example, masks. Uh, uh, for Even health professionals don't have, unfortunately, because people just went and grabbed them. And uh, some of them are hoarding and making money on it. Uh, some have just uh, run out. So the government in US has issued a request uh, for the engineering firm because uh, they have masks to protect themselves from the dust and all that. And they are saying even those are helpful. So they are requesting to provide those to health professionals, donate to health professional at this moment. But in terms of food and other things, I think, uh, a community by community, this need to, system need to be developed. So thank you so much. And uh, there is a question by uh, uh, another person. Please go ahead and uh, uh, speak. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Umar Dakwala. I am from Lawton uh, uh, Center uh, in Virginia. Uh, we have met in the past, Brother uh, Mujahid, uh, at our location. Uh, my question was like, uh, would you please uh, put down all the webinar details and the topic on in regards to who will be the khatib and which day, which topic will be uh, spoken about? 
Yes, yes, it is already there. If okay, you see on the screen, sanvision.com okay. forward slash webinars, plural okay. webinars. Right. Uh, in there. I'm familiar with the website. Uh, right. If it is okay. already there, then inshallah I will get it. Uh, but uh, regarding to the same topic, like, uh, is there any way, like, based on the institution or anything you know locally over here? Because uh, we couldn't find like much of the hygiene uh, stuff uh, like sanitization or the mask and all these things. But uh, e even on the medical side, you know, even in the stores, uh, because this is the main important thing right now. Like if, if people are having this type of resources, at least they can eliminate uh, 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 this, uh, you know, and they can be much safer instead of just going out because it goes in the air. Who knows when and where and who gets it? Okay, so this is uh, right. Again, people have purchased a stock uh, unnecessarily high level in a panic. Uh, so what uh, the government is saying is that it is good to have sanitizers, but washing hands uh, repeatedly, thoroughly, uh, as we do in Vadu, just yeah. add uh, soap to it. And if it is warmer water, that is uh, even better, which most of has available. So anytime you do anything, touch anything, go and uh, what I am adopting is I have written this thing on uh, article on Sun Vision website, uh, doing a thorough wazoo and keeping yourself with wazoo is important. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, although he did not ask his followers, but personally he was always will be in wazoo. And even before sleeping, he will make wadu. So, so I think those hygienic practices, which are part of our culture are very important. And I have asserted them in an article on our website, uh, but people are also advising not to use, uh, not to make sanitizers yourself. So some people are giving out recipes to make sanitizers. Uh, US government is discouraging people. They say it's not needed as long as you keep washing hands and don't uh, connect with your no, with your face and uh, different uh, things there, uh, that will be helpful. That's what we are doing. Right. But sanitizers are becoming available. Our uh, office manager is not online uh, at this moment, but uh, Soundvision did not purchase sanitizer. We had other things here, but did not purchase any stock. So when I requested her that every desk should be provided, uh, one uh, she was able to order. Uh, it was a, uh, a one week wait time, but we were able to get that. So mm -hmm. things are coming in the market, but they go away within 10 minutes. Right. So if you order online, you are in line to be delivered. But if you're gonna go to Walmart or other stores, uh, it, it just pe what people are doing. In, you know, we need to have those things, but we should not buy. Uh, in panic. We should not buy too many things. We need to allow people. And the richer people are doing worse job. There was an article in New York Times, or was it, I think New York Times probably, reporter went to a richer neighborhood and in the grocery stores of that neighborhood, there was nothing which she could purchase. But mm -hmm. four miles from there where she lives, which is a lower middle class neighborhood, grocery stores have all the grocery items for people to purchase. So people need to be considerate. Here it was because of the income uh, disparity, uh, but uh, uh, otherwise it is a uh, important thing to be considered. Okay, any other uh, brother Taha? Some other hands are there, are you? Yes. Sure, yes. Uh, so, Sheikh Ehsan Ansari, please go ahead. Oh, I think he's unmuted. Oh, muted. Yes. yes, go ahead. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, okay. Uh, so, this is uh, Imam Ehsan from Toronto. Uh, I'm from the Furqan Foundation. Uh, so Alhamdulillah, you know, this is great work that's happening and may Allah subhanahu wa bless you all uh, for your efforts in trying to solve and help in this crisis. Uh, so what I'm looking to do is connecting with organizations, uh, you know, that are distributing these essential items to non-Muslims. And as you know that, you know, this will last for a month, two months, Allah subhanahu wa knows how long they'll go on for. Uh, and people have a crisis of faith. Uh, so what, what we're willing to do is to give them a free Quran. Uh, so I want to connect with organizations that are distributing this, these items and then they can also give a free Quran if the person wants it uh, Just as a small gift from them. So if anyone's interested inshallah, 
uh, Brother Taha, you know me as well, so we can connect on that basis and we can provide the clear Quran by Dr. Muslim Khattab, which is really good translation written for the enormous perspective. So inshallah, if that's of interest of anyone, please let me know. Jazakallah khair. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Jazakallah khair. Thank you. Okay, we have Rabia Shahid who would like to speak next. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Uh, my name is Sister Rabia. I'm a founder of Sikh at Hand Canada. It's a non-profit organization. Thank you so much, Brother Tahaga. You, you, this is an amazing initiative, and we really wanted to work together as a community. It's amazing that all the uh, you know, Muslim organizations are coming together to help support the community. So from our organization, uh, my first question was this. We wanted to know how we can help to prepare these, uh, you know, the kits. That's the one question. Secondly, we would like to offer any senior, any single mom, any person, not necessarily any person. We are not going to like pinpoint anyone, any person who need any fresh groceries in, in terms of, you know, vegetables, fruits. We are more than uh, happy to provide that baskets. We make these baskets for our community. We provide these to the people with the disabilities, the people who are homeless, the people who are seniors. And you know, single mom, domestic violence, women, uh, and abuse in an abusive relationship. But it is open now for everyone. So we'll be more than happy uh, to provide that services. Uh, you know, uh, from this platform, so anyone can contact us. Excellent, very good. And inshallah, I will uh, connect with you a couple of. Uh, you may already be familiar with a couple of initiatives locally that are uh, doing this uh, work as well. So I think it'll be a great idea for, for you guys to coordinate and uh, Jazakallah khair. Thanks for sharing that. That's amazing. And you can, uh, and just not you, in fact, anyone uh, who is sharing any of this information or who would like us to be connected with them or needs any other information about our webinars or any other things that we're doing or articles, uh, please email us at webinars at soundvision.com and we can coordinate and communicate further. Thank you, sister and everybody else. Any other questions at this point? Okay, I think we are, we are good for now. Um, if that's pretty much it, uh, then let's, uh, let's conclude. Uh, maybe Imam Mujahid, you can conclude uh, with uh, the final words. And actually before that, um, inshallah, after the webinar, we will share with you the actual text of the article, which has, of course, more information um, uh, than, than what you see on the webinar, which you can share with others as well. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you so much uh, for joining. May Allah bless you. Please keep uh, uh, take care of your health and your loved ones and keep making dua. Dua is very powerful. People are panicking. God controls the world. We don't. Our duty is when we know what we can think based on the best brains Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, we make a decision and act on it. Rest is up to Allah. This whole me and you, all of us, are not even a small particle in our earth. And our earth is not even a particle in our galaxy. And I don't know how many galaxies are out there. So, so God controls the world. And, but we have to tie the camel. And then we say, So enjoy life. May Allah protect you. Subhanakallah. والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته